the retirement spending humpback. I am coming up with this. I am coming up with that term. I'm going to trademark it. So don't you steal it, retirement planners out there. Don't you steal the retirement planning humpback. This is mine. So anyway, going back to the history of retirement spending. All right, so we used to have the linear retirement spending that your expenditures would go up each and every year with inflation. Well, that's just dumb. I think we can all recognize that. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. None. The evidence is, is simply not there. Then we had the retirement spending smile. All right. So basically, as you start here in retirement, and as you age, your retirement, your spending got old, you know, lower and lower until it started having health care concerns, long-term care and whatnot. And then the your spending went up and pretty exponentially. Well, there's no evidence of that. Uh, in terms, there's no evidence that says you're, I mean, there's a few people that spend up here relative to what they spent when they first started retiring. There's not nearly enough evidence to make most people have retirement spending smile as their plan. There just isn't enough. I mean, it can happen and it happens on occasion, but not, not frequently enough that we'd want to say you should model your retirement on the retirement spending smile. I actually, so I, I didn't trademark, I'm just goofing, but I like to actually call it the retirement spending fish hook. All right. So basically you start here, retirement, your go-go years, your spending goes down, goes down, goes down, levels off. That goes up a little bit as you age because of increased healthcare costs. And basically know that the, the most of your healthcare costs is spent in the last two years of your life. And so your retirement spending fish hook, I liked. But now I'm going to show you the retirement plan, the spending humpback, if that makes sense. It's not even, uh, it's not even a retirement spending humpback. It's more of a, the, the late year uh, humpback. And so let's just go into this. This is the uh, Consumer Expenditure Survey by Air, uh, varies by age. This is from Ann Foster. I'm not sure if she's still there or not. Um, in 2021, she was. And she actually has her email on here at some point. I, I figured I might email her one time. Uh, but this is from 2015. It's, a, it's not going to matter that much, actually, uh, especially 2020 and 2021 are just weird years anyway. So a consumer expenditures by age. I, I'm a very big fan of the BLS, the beyond the number stuff. It's just so much. Look, man, I'll, if I have it up here, you know, hold on, so I'll show you. Oh, man, this is pretty cool. So this is a housing expenditures uh, from 2002. But watch all this stuff you have. Look, look at all this, dude. It's just, I've been sitting here all night long, all night, all night, just looking at, it's just fantastic. So much stuff to read in here. The history of it is just, it's, it's a plethora of awesome information. And so I got interrupted because my neighbor's dog we thought was lost, Kona. Kona's a big old golden retriever, old, can't hear, can't see. And uh, uh, the whole neighborhood was looking for her, thinking she was lost. Turn out she was in the pantry the whole time. So we just spent the last hour to hour and a half walking around in the woods behind us trying to find old Kona. And uh, she was in the pantry, which is which is awesome. It's just it's funny. It, it's a dog's world, man. And uh, just cracks me up. All right. So anyway, so we're going to go to this here right here. Um, consumer expenditures vary by age. And then we're going to go here. Uh, outlays on pensions and Social Security increase with ages up to 45 to 54 before declining. That yeah, makes sense. I mean, you're not spending any Social Security taxes or any money on pensions or 401k contributions because you're retired. The share of the food budget devoted to food at home increase with age while the share devoted to food away from home decline. Makes sense. As you get older, you actually eat more at home, unlike what everybody says. Healthcare spending increase with age. Makes sense. Consumer expenditure household data classified by age of the ref, ref, reference person shows that annual expenditures are humped shaped over the life cycle. So I call hump back so I can trademark it. They say hump shaped. All right, hump shaped over the life cycle. Lowest for the 25 years under, uh, lowest for the years under 25, then increasing to their high, highest levels where I'm at right now, and then declining for the remaining groups. And we're going to show you right here. So here it is the retirement spending humpback and we could call this a lifestyle spending humpback but either way it's not even a humpback so much it's certainly not a fish hook it's the exact opposite of a linear increase with spending right here but i, I just you can see the visual of this man so here i mean this isn't just retirees if we start with retirees right here it's not even a humpback it's a it's not even a a smile or a fish hook it's literally a uh i don't even know what that'd be a repel the retirement spending repel because you're just going down and we can see right here, so what the two lines are income and expenditures. And isn't it interesting, too, other than right here when you're under the 25 years old and right here when you're over 75, and this is suspect, but I'll, I'll share with you just a second. We have more income 
Then we do expenditures in every bracket except for basically this one right here because this is, I'll show you why that's wrong. But anyway, you can see much, that's 11,000 more. That's 20,000 more. That's 20, 18,000 more. That's almost 20,000 more. That's 7,000 more. And that's basically flat. This is actually, if you actually look at all sources of income, which they don't, this would be higher. Anyway, so here's the retirement spending humpback. So just as an FYI, if we say right here, before, like, so right now is my, almost my peak earnings years. I'm making $74,000 a year. Why would I need uh, 80% of 74,000? So we'll just, we'll just say yeah, 74,000 times 0. 0.8 equals, I would need $59,000 of expenditures as an 80% replacement rate. Why? I don't, I mean, look, expenditures are right here. <laughs> When I'm 55 to 64, my expenditure is only 55,000. When I'm 65 to 74, my expenditure is only 46,000. When I'm 75 and older, my expenditures are only 35,000. So basically, if you average these around, my expenditure is about 45,000 over the course of my retirement career. So why would I need to have an 80% replacement ratio based on that? It makes no sense, man. So 45 divided by 74, I need about 60% replacement ratio. Huh. I wonder who's mentioned that before. Stupid. All right, so you can see what happens here. This is your income in the blue. This is your expenditures in the in the light blue. And we're going to see, this is, I mean, this is pretty significant. So here's food. Uh, food grew to about 7,900 bucks for the 35 to 44 and 45 to 54 year old groups and then declined significantly. Look at this, man. Food away from home, food from home. $7,900 for this category. And then declines. Why? Your kids get out of the house. You get older. You don't as hungry so much. So food goes down from seventy nine hundred bucks to basically what's that? Four thousand bucks. That's a fifty percent decline. Housing. Oh my lands. Housing was uh, housing non housing expense. Let's see. Housing outlays did not strictly fall the hump shape previously des described. Yeah, pretty doggone close. Looks like hump shape. Uh, spending increased from ten thousand for under twenty five people. Uh, to, let's see, 20000 for the 35 to 44 age group, which the, uh, right here, uh, for out, right there, 20, yeah. So basically the max is right here. I'm right here, right, the max. Huh, so your spending actually didn't go up that much for housing. Isn't that interesting? Why? Oh, because you had a fixed mortgage and at some point your mortgage gets paid off, which is why your housing goes down. This isn't rocket science, man. Non-housing outlays, total expenditures, less housing expenditures did follow the hump-shaped pattern. Uh, previous research using consumer expenditure data also found this pattern, even after the effects of other facts, factors were taken into account. So basically what's happening here is we have housing expenditures for this group right here was uh, $18,000 off total expenditures was uh, right here, $55,000. Housing is by far and away the biggest expenditure by far and away the biggest expenditure. So basically a third of their expenditures in this group right here was on housing. How much was on housing here? Well, about a half of their expenditures. So the housing went up. Uh, no, it did not. And I'll share with you here in just a second. I mean, it did for the average Joe, but still it doesn't matter because it went up as a percentage, but your other expenditures went way down to include your housing. All right, let's keep going because it's pretty interesting here. Um, clothing and apparel. Look at this, we got clothing, Went down. It's crazy to think that as you age, you don't spend as much on outfits. Nuts. Transportation went way down. The humpback. Humpback. Why? You're not buying cars. You're not commuting. It, all this stuff is just inherently so obvious until someone points out. How much you're contributing to your 401ks, pensions, and Social Security went way down. Hmm. The two biggest line items on consumer expenditures are transportation and housing. And housing, what does housing do? The blue goes with the light blue, North Carolina blue, goes up and up and up and then goes down. Right here is when it levels off. As you start paying it down, you start downsizing, you start having your mortgage paid off. All right, so let's keep going down here. Healthcare, ah, healthcare is a big one. So let's take a look. They have a graph for healthcare. I thought they did, maybe not. But we'll read healthcare. Out of pocket, OOP healthcare expenditures uh, increase with the age uh, to 51.88 for the age 65 to 74 group. And again, this is 10 years ago. 
Uh, so basically, they're saying you know five thousand bucks for the uh, for the each consumer unit household, and that could be an average. I think is one point six once you're over sixty five years old. So basically, about uh, you know, I'd say about five hundred bucks a person uh, for, in today's numbers for sure. All right, uh, the forty nine ten spent by the seventy five year old group was not statistically different from the amount spent by the sixty five to seventy four. The reason it went down is because one of the people died. I know that sounds bad, but it's true. So once one person dies, there's not two Medicare Part Bs, Part Ds, and supplemental policies will cost you less. All right, so the healthcare share of the household budget increased to 14.3% of the 75 and older group. All right, so the only thing that actually goes up is healthcare. It went up from 3.1% if you're under 25 to 143 Previous research using consumer expenditure data uh, 98, 2003, and 2008 fall, also falls a positive association between healthcare spending and age as you get older. It inherently just makes sense. You get older, you get, you just, look, man, when you're young, you can do stuff that you can't do when you get older. It's crazy. Um, uh, let's see. If the institutionalized population were included in the CE, the people in nursing homes and whatnot, is likely that healthcare spending would go up much higher and claim a greater sh share of, of the uh, compared to younger uh, buyers, younger age groups. I'm assuming institu let's see what they say, but institutionalized. Um, uh, Center for uh, Assisted Living, I'm assuming is assisted living and uh, nursing homes and whatnot, but um, I'm posting uh, Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, let's keep going. So if you're in a nursing home, your healthcare spending goes up. Shocking. But you know what else doesn't go up? Your housing costs because you're in a nursing home transportation costs because you're in a nursing home, your food because you're in a nursing home. Enterta I'm not even going to talk about entertainment. It's pensions and Social Security. Well, your pensions and Social Security but at the age of 45 to 54 are 7300 bucks, or 12.1% of your total expenditures. Uh, let's see. As you get older, 75 and older, it's only 2.4%. Other expenses on other, uh, amounts spent on other expenses follow the typical hump-shaped pattern. Uh, that goes from uh, six to eight hundred bucks to my age group, forty-five to fifty-four, and then declines to forty-eight, fit forty-four for seventy-five and older. Crazy. All right, so let's just look right here. So we got, as you can see here, the number of consumer units and in th in households uh, thousands. Twenty-eight. Uh, what's that? Uh, in thousands. So we put three zeros behind there. I don't know what that is. Is that uh, one hundred twenty-five thousand in thousands? I'm just going to go with 22,000. I'm not sure. It says in thousands. So do we add three zeros? That'd be 125 million. That seems, I don't know, whatever. We're going to say 23,000 households, 16,000 households, 12,000 households. All right. So the pre-tax income right here for 55 to 64 is 74,000. For my age, it's 78,000. All right. 53,000, 34,000. So remember, pre-tax income. All right. Number of persons in the household, 75 and older, is 1.6. Who so someone's spouse died? 2.1, 2.7 if you're my age. All right, let's keep going. Uh, vehicles, they had 2.2. That's transportation, and they went, they dropped by half as you get over 75 years old. Shocking that. Uh, only 39 males, 61 females as you get over 75. Again, shocking. That should not be shocking. Actually, I'm just silly when I say that because most people, when they get over 75, are women. Um, Housing tenure, homeowner, 69, 79, 82, and 79%. So this is 45 to 54. So basically, once you are over 55, yeah, once you're over 55, 80% of households own a home. All right, 80% of households own a home. 43% of that 80% have a mortgage. 32% once you're 65 to 74 have a mortgage. 12% once you're over 75 have a mortgage. Thus, your household costs go down inherently. That's just so freaking obvious. Uh, only, I mean, look at that, man. It's not 67% of all the units that don't have a mortgage. It's 67% of all units have no mortgage over 75. All right, let's see here. So we're going to go to average expenditures. This is what matters most. Oh, my goodness, they're only spending 34000 Why? Because they're only making 34000 They ran out of money. Let me show you why that's wrong. Let's see if they show us the earnings here. All right, so here's the consumer expenditure for 2004 and 5. I'm just using this. You can they get it every single year, and it's awesome. Income this is for 65 to 74 year old people uh, households. Income before taxes 43, basically 44 thousand. Income after taxes 43 thousand. So they lose about a thousand bucks in taxes. Age of reference person about 69. All right, so you can see we're making 42 thousand dollars income. How's that income derived? Do, 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 do. Let's go down here, and we're going to show you. 
Hold on just a second. All right. Wages and set. So money income before tax is 43000 of which 16000 comes from wages. Uh, 3000 comes from self-employment. Social Security, private and government retirement, 21000 Interest, dividend, rental income, and other property income, 2000 hmm? Unemployment, public assistance, regular contributions or support, and other income. Huh. Wait, wait, wait. And then federal income, personal taxes, 1000 bucks. Wages, 16000 Self-employment income, 3500 Social Security, private and government retirement. What does that mean? You see anything for IRA distributions? No, we don't see anything for IRA distributions. It's supposed to come from here, private retirement. But no, that doesn't make, you know, do you have income from government, private, social security, private, or government pension? And you're like, I don't have that. I have social security. But how about IRA distributions? It's not there. You see what I'm saying? So if we don't see where it says explicitly IRA distributions, that's what you should say, IRA distributions. You can even say Roth IRA distributions. And another thing that's not showing up here is if you have money in a savings or check account. It's just this is completely not corrupted. It's just it's, it's silly on its face. If you don't have an explicit line item for income, expenditures from other assets other than uh, what's showing up on your 1040. It doesn't make any sense. And that would be a Roth IRA. Any IRA contract, any IRA accounts or retire or any kind of retirement accounts brokerage accounts any cash distributions from a check and savings ira should be in there but it's not so we go back to the uh the humpback we can see that that's why our income is only thirty four thousand because it completely and then, look the social security administration said that itself that's why they don't use the current population uh, survey from the uh from the census bureau on income because it's completely like you're not pulling all the income that's actually out there Anyway, so you can see, food is 13% of total expenditures for, well, it's just for uh, 65 to 74, uh, of which food at home is 8%, food away from home is uh, 5%. And you can see the food away from home, um, it, uh, let's see, right there was, so you can see from 55 to 64, food away from home was only 4.4. Then it grew in the following decade, then it dropped pretty significantly. And that, Pretty interesting if you ask me. I guess more people are going out to eat. I don't know. Actually, what it is is we're spending less money and we're consuming more at home because you can see the actual dollars that we spend on food away from home drop. It's just as a percentage of our expenditures, it increases because we're spending less. We went from 56000 to 46000 Housing, again, 33% of our expenditures goes to housing. Well, we already showed that if you have no mortgage, you're going to have a significant less in expenditures on housing. That's just a fact. Clothing dropped significantly from fifteen hundred bucks to twelve hundred bucks. Transportation, it went from basically ten thousand to eight thousand to five thousand. I mean, again, just you don't drive as much. You sell your car. I mean, you're gonna have to buy a car, maybe. Who knows? But anyway, transportation, the second biggest expenditure. So we have food, thirteen percent. Housing, thirty-three percent. Transportation, seventeen percent. Healthcare, eleven percent. And then healthcare becomes the third biggest expenditure after transportation even when you're over 75 which seems kind of weird to me but okay uh then of course pensions and social security and whatnot so the facts are my friends we have the retirement spending humpback expenditures right there and it just it makes no sense at all to assume that there is an increase in expenditures with inflation if we're going to use the data that's out there if you don't want to use the data that's out there it's fine i don't care but don't say the evidence shows you that you need to do that because the evidence is the exact opposite. No, love your thoughts. Thanks now. We'll see ya.